Shock troops, devil dogs, blood sucking, war machines, born to fight, trained to kill, ready to die, but never will. <laughs> I was as shocked as you might be right now. The first time I heard that cadence, when I found myself in Marine Corps boot camp. I'm from a town similar to Boulder and used to hear things like support the troops and had no idea what that meant. It was hard for me to connect to the thought that people were fighting for my freedom while I, I was trying to figure out what to wear to the mall. The concept of war was simply too much. There was one kid who joined out of high school and I remember him being uncomfortably direct with a super straight posture. And I watched him and wondered why anyone would ever sign up for that. Well, it was later my experience that there are roughly two types of people who join. Those with a rich military family background and a certain moral fiber in their blood, and those who haven't found their place just yet but are craving something more. And I fell into the latter. After boot camp, I started traveling as a military broadcast journalist and saw things that blew my sheltered, first world mind. I couldn't comprehend the level of poverty or the things people had to do to survive. I was in a hot combat zone in Afghanistan doing a story on Marines behind the scene when I met an armor responsible for servicing the weapons for the entire region. And for some reason, this story stuck with me. Within this Marine sanctuary, a protected eye in the raging war around him, I saw him in his element. From afar, he was cool and robotic, but up close, he revered the weapons, and he handled them with a life and death precision. Watching him, something clicked. This was that proverbial weird kid in high school. He had found his perfect place in the world, something few ever find. And for him, it was real and it was meaningful. Later, back in the States, someone joked that only people who like violence join the military. And although it was honestly along the lines of a thought I had previously held, in that moment, I was stunned. I considered my own life growing up blissfully unaware and finally felt the full weight of the injustices that I had seen. And I was sick with the irony that I now deeply understood what that fighting for our freedom meant. So now landing here in beautiful Boulder, similar to where I grew up, is interesting. I empathize with folks unfamiliar with military culture and not quite knowing how to embrace the 15,500 veterans we have here in Boulder County alone. I also relate to the military community, trying to build a life after seeing things you can't quite unsee. The result to me is a palpable disconnect between our populations, yet there is so much that we can learn from one another. For instance, I'm continually shocked at how relevant my military training is as I navigate the professional community. Our mottos like adapt and overcome are spot on to the challenges I face every day. But maybe my largest takeaway is a sense of gratitude that I never could have fathomed before. Sometimes I close my eyes and feel the weight of those injustices. And suddenly, my life here is very much OK. I also appreciate the ability to find levity in the darkest of times, or the hilarious in the everyday, like laughing now at how I used to pee my pants instead of stopping on a run to shave seconds off my fitness test. <laughs> so whether you're opposed to the politics of this organization or its mission, the military is not some bureaucratic, dinosaur, brainwashing machine. Okay, sure it is, but it, but it is also brilliant. In a progressive society where the words history and tradition are losing their significance, there is no arguing the military has successfully instilled honor and purpose and grit into generations of Americans. So rather, rather than leave this time-tested model in the dust and give it a bad rep, how can we replicate the military's ability to foster camaraderie off the battlefield? Well, I invite you tonight, both Boulderites and veterans alike, to become curious about one another and start asking questions. 
We can reframe military service from a warmongering experience to a powerful reservoir of poignant life lessons.